speaking from my own experience with perfectionism tendencies, if I didn't think that I could be the best at something sometimes, then my inner critic would grab a hold of that and say, well, if you're not going to be the best at it, why do it? Mm -hmm. Right? And holding to your philosophy of it's the journey, not the end result, I had to move out of perfectionism and into learning opportunities. Mm -hmm. And how is everything a learning and growth opportunity for me because I'm not perfect, mm -hmm. right? If I were perfect, I would have nothing more to learn but that would be me limiting myself because there is no such thing as perfect. Mm -hmm. It is what is perfect for me. So if I put myself into that box and say, well, if I'm not going to be perfect at it in whose eyes, then I'm not even going to go for it. Or if I have perfectionism tendencies, like I want my space to look a very certain way. Is that really perfectionism or is it my preference? So preferencism, right? <laughs> we'll call it preferencism. <laughs> my preference is to have a space that looks and functions in this way and everything must be in that place. And then all of a sudden I invite somebody else into my place and they're perfect or they're approach to things is different than my approach to things, we're going to have a fight. And how do we reconcile that versus coming at it from here's my preferencesisms, mm -hmm. and those are your preferencesisms. How can I learn from what you prefer? You learn from what I prefer. And then we create something even better, even better in that way. Because you saw things differently than I saw things. Yeah, I like that. There's so many good things that you touched on in there. Um, I'd like to break it down. Break it down, baby. <laughs> break it down. <laughs> um, one is the. I've heard. Uh, I've heard so many people say what you said, and it's like, okay, well, you know, I want to. Uh, I'm a perfectionist because I'm, if I'm not going to do, I, I, I want to be the best at something, or else why do it? Yes. Right. Well. I'm sorry, but what a lofty assumption to assume that you being the best is the perfect at it. I mean, even even the best at anything, it, like in, especially in sports, like the best golfers are still not perfect at golf. Yes. So that's a that's a crazy assumption. And sometimes they're really good at it because they're not perfect. Like oh. a swing that's not technically perfect yeah. can be perfect for you. Yes to get you to where you desire to go right. on the course, right? Yeah, but no one's no one's like gone to a golf course and shot 18. Like it just hasn't, it's never happened. And that to me is an exciting part about golf is yeah. that even the best golfers in the world are never gonna beat golf. But that you can apply that to almost everything. There's a reason why records keep getting broken and things keep, you know, we keep evolving as a society because if we just stopped and said, oh, well, they're, they're the best, so they're perfect. Well, then we just stop innovating. Yes. We'd stop breaking records because we would make that assumption that it's already there. When in fact, there's a whole plethora of space between the be quote unquote best and the ideological perfect. Yes. So I think that's an unnecessary pressure to place on oneself. And again, back to the result versus the process, right? Why limit to a result? Like just because if you want to do something, I'm there's a lot of things I'm not great at, you know. But sometimes it's just fun. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's you just want to go and just do it because it's fun. You don't have to be the best at it. Like me and karaoke. <laughs> <laughs>